living the dream. Now, yeah, here on Vintage yeah. Rock Pod, we like to hear these stories about these legends, and you've you've said so many already. It's been incredible. Uh, but one I'd like to hear about is uh, Keith Moon. You were good friends with Keith, and um, yes. yeah, that went on for for a while, obviously. But you did have a little run in the first time you ever met him, didn't you, with a a sequined Union Jack jacket? And uh, uh, can you tell Union us that Jack. story? I love that one. <laughs> yeah. So what happens in those days? A British invasion, Paul, comes in. And at that time, they had the musicians had to go through Montreal to get their visas before they do the big shows in the States, especially New York. So people like Hendrix were coming, or The Who, uh, Traffic, all those bands, the Trogs, came through Montreal. It so happens that the band that we had, Energy, had a studio deep inside, underground, th that we were able to play 24-7. And so we were opening a lot of these shows because our manager book, it was like Madison Square Garden. The felt, you know, the forum was the hockey, the hockey rink, but that's where all the big shows went. Anyway, so when Hendrix came through, he wasn't as big in Montreal yet. You know, I mean, we're talking about, yeah, these what was the mid, yeah, late 60s, early yeah. 70s. We were, our band would open the shows for these bands because you had to be, you had to use a Canadian band. Yeah. So we lucked out. So we were opening the show for The Who, opened the show for <laughs> Hendrix, you know. It was great. So cutting to the story about that, um, I, I think I made it clear in my days that Keith Moon was my guy. That was my guy. Not far as you. We were also at the same label over there. They were on track records. We were managed by the same people. So we knew each other from that. Leslie was very friendly with Pete Townsend. So it was good. Anyway, so forget the exact year, but we're playing the show and the people in the audience never saw the Who break everything up. It's Canada. This is their first big show. And yeah, they're going crazy and the crowd's rioting. It was bad and everything's flying. And I go behind, at the end of the show, things quiet down. I go behind the stage where I put my drum set. I, stay, you know, I stored it there and I go and I see, see this beautiful jacket, all sequenced with the flag. What do you call it? You know, the Union Jack, yeah. Uh, Union Jack, the one that he used or the Pete used and all the yeah. promo. And I pick it up, Paul. And I go, I guess he doesn't want it. He threw it off. You know, we're talking under the stage. I pick it up and I put it under my coat and I go back to the dressing room, hockey, hockey locker room. And I say, hey, guys, in my band, I said, I got Keith Moon's jacket. And they say, what are you talking about? Well, he threw it off the stage. I guess he doesn't, doesn't want it. Sure enough, at that moment, the locker room next door with the Hoover screaming and shouting. There's, I'm going to get me fucking jacket. My jacket's on stage. I'm going to get my jacket. I'm not doing it that great, but okay. <laughs> go with me on that one. I got to get on my jacket. I got to go. And there, and he's got no clothes on. He's going out to the, out to the stage along the hall. They're holding him back because I'm going to get the, and he's, and he's going past the dressing room. Not, I, and I see him. I said, I, I, Keith, Keith, he said, no, no autographs now. I'm going to get me jacket. Me grandma made me jacket, and it's my first year, the whole thing. And I go, no, and he keeps walking. I said, Keith, I screamed. I took the jacket. I went, here it is. And he looks at me. And at that point, I went, what the fuck is he going to do? He comes at me, and he grabs me by the fucking coat, and he says, I can't believe it, mate. You got me jacket. You got me jacket. I'll never forget you. And he gives me a great big kiss, as only Keith Moon could do. No tongue. Big kiss. And I go, whoa, whoa. This is... And he says, walk away. I'll never forget you, mate. I'll never forget you. And he's walking out. And I said, I don't know what came over me. I said, um, Keith, I was going to steal it. And I said, what the fuck did I say that for? Anyways, he comes back, and this time his eyes are out of his head. And he comes up and grabs me again. But you didn't steal it, did you, mate? You got it back to me. I love you even more. Another big kiss right on the lips. At this point, I thought we had a relationship, Paul. Anyways, <laughs> he walks out, and he stays just and he, the point is he remembered all that as we were on the road. As a matter of fact, when they played Madison Square Garden, Happened. I took him for dinner somewhere, and the next day he says, "You got to come to the show." I said, "Okay." And he gives me a little button because that each of the guys in the band they sold out four nights had a button for that night. And he sat me right behind Pete Townsend's amps. Had a little table, a little, little coffee table with you know whatever he needed on stage. And he's sitting right there, Paul. He's right there, and I'm looking at him. 
And it's, it's beyond me. So I'm looking, I'm trying to figure, what is he doing? How does he do that? You know, I'm, I'm right there. We get off the stage and, Fred, what'd you think? Hey, what'd you walk? And he's walking off. Everybody's happy to go back to the trip. I said, uh, Keith, and he said, don't ask me any questions. Don't ask me what I do. No fucking idea. And anyway, so we, we had a relationship. Fast forward again when I'm doing my my tour, my band in California, and I'm playing the whiskey, all right? Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody shows up <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. except Levon, except Warren Zevon and Keith Moon. They were the only two people. <laughs> there were like 10 people who showed up. But they were good. And I remember because the head of the, of the uh, agency, the booking, all the big shots were there. And who comes backstage with Keith? And they go, great. But how many people in the audience? bingo you know but yeah so we had we had a we had a, a great a great time and when we were in england he would come about you know to the to the uh, wherever we were staying and we'd hang out and uh yeah then there's uh what's his name the fellow that wrote the hubo great guy uh i can't think of him in there now i will It'll, I'll, I'll get a brain for it in a minute so he wrote the book on keith and it's in the book a lot of that stuff i think is in his book it's certainly in my book yeah yeah uh, is that enough is that that's, that's, that's <laughs> all right. brilliant, you know, absolutely fantastic dude, I dude, love am stories. i missing anything am i missing anything? <laughs> <laughs> okay well no the point is how how great what a, I, I mean Everybody loved him. I wasn't, you know, but the fact that he took me under his wing mm -hmm. was yeah. uh, unbelievable. Very cool. Very cool guy indeed. Yeah.